One minute to pose. One minute. The horses are approaching this starting gate. Waiting now for Sanarki, and she is all business. And they're in the gate. And uh, they're off. Red Burgundy away well, along with a Snarky. Red Burgundy has the lead, and Snarky is on the outside racing in second. Fast and frisky down at the rail. In between horses, a hard hell stars in the city who is racing in fourth. Then comes Naughty Destiny in fifth. Practical Royalty moves up on the outside from sixth. She is all businesses in seventh. Dividend Recap is down at the rail and gaining some ground now from eighth. Then it's the gray Saratoga Smoke Show who is in tight there and in ninth. Coach Sessa is next in a 10th, and at the back of the pack are calling an audible and pretty up. Opening quarter mile, 24 seconds, and it's the favorite, Red Burgundy, who leads here by two lengths. Snarky second by a head. Fast and Frisky is down at the rail, and then it's another two lengths back to Practical Royalty, along with Dividend Recap. They're heads apart, fifth and sixth. The half mile in 49 and 3. Then comes Naughty Destiny on the outside. And Stars in the City is down at the rail. Coach Sessa has uh, picked up a few spots down on the inside. They're all chasing Red Burgundy, who has the lead here going into the far turn. Red Burgundy now by three lengths. Fast and frisky. Snarky. They remain second and third. Red Burgundy is the leader. Fast and Frisky is second by a head. Snarky's on the outside in third. Then Practical Royalty and Dividend Recap as they head for home with Red Burgundy in front by three and a half lengths. Fast and Frisky, Dividend Recap now coming on through to grab second. Red Burgundy is the leader. The leader by three. Then Dividend Recap. Naughty Destiny is putting in a late run. Red Burgundy trying to hang in there for another 50 yards. On the outside is Dividend Recap and it's going to be tight. Photo finish at the end. Dividend recap or Red Burgundy. A photo finish in the Thursday opener.
Time of the race, 1 minute 45 and 1 fifth seconds. Number two, Red Burgundy was first. Number one, Dividend Recap second. Number 10, Naughty Destiny was third. And number three, Fast and Frisky finished fourth. Results unofficial. 2-1, 10-3. Number two is Red Burgundy, two-year-old gray filly by Noble Mission out of uh, Parc Monceau by Giants Causeway. Red Burgundy owned by Barry K. Schwartz, trained by Horacio de Paz, and the rider, Kendrick Carmouche. Race one is official. The exacta $21.30, the trifecta $112.75, and the superfecta $326.60. In the second race, there are no changes. It begins the early pick four. We're fast and firm. Race two in 24 minutes at 108.
Red Burgundy away well, along with a Snarky. Red Burgundy has the lead, and Snarky is on the outside racing in second. Fast and frisky down at the rail. In between horses, a hard hell stars in the city who is racing in fourth. Then comes Naughty Destiny in fifth. Practical Royalty moves up on the outside from sixth. She is all businesses in seventh. Dividend recap is down at the rail and gaining some ground now from eighth. Then it's the gray Saratoga Smoke Show who is in tight there and in ninth. Coach Sessa is next in a 10th, and at the back of the pack are calling an audible and pretty up. Opening quarter mile, 24 seconds. And it's the favorite, Red Burgundy, who leads here by two lengths. Snarky, second by a head. Fast and Frisky is down at the rail. And then it's another two lengths back to Practical Royalty, along with Dividend Recap. They're heads apart, fifth and sixth. The half mile in 49 and 3. Then comes Naughty Destiny on the outside. And Stars in the City is down at the rail. Coach Sessa has uh, picked up a few spots down on the inside. They're all chasing Red Burgundy, who has the lead here going into the far turn. Red Burgundy now by three lengths. Fast and frisky. Snarky. They remain second and third. Red Burgundy is the leader. Fast and Frisky is second by a head. Snarky's on the outside in third. Then Practical Royalty and Dividend Recap as they head for home with Red Burgundy in front by three and a half lengths. Fast and Frisky, Dividend Recap now coming on through to grab second. Red Burgundy is the leader, the leader by three. Then Dividend Recap, Naughty Destiny is putting in a late run. Red Burgundy trying to hang in there for another 50 yards. On the outside is Dividend Recap and it's gonna be tight. Photo finish at the end. Dividend recap or Red Burgundy. A photo finish in the Thursday opener.
Reach for the unreachable. Race to new horizons. The artisan's quest for beauty burns in the heart of Japan, forging strength like no other, with love and honed to perfection. Noble, authentic, and only here. The legacy of strength.
by the barest of noses. And the last bob she was ever going to win, Red Burgundy, was able to hold off the first year dividend recap. And probably the other Clement, Naughty Destiny, who finished a fast closing third, probably ran the best race of all, saddled with a far outside post and three wide in the turn, as opposed to the first two that basically stayed inside the whole way. But Reg Burgundy, Tkenner Carbouche, and Horacio de Paz get it done to start the day out. Race number two, six furlongs and their maidens and their New York breads. And no surprise, the seven better humor me as the favorite right now. And I think she should be the favorite. She ran fine in her debut. She didn't take any money that day, but she chased Richie's Princess. The winner was a heavily bet first time star. And Olito was second, came back to win. Albeit she did run six buyer points or seven buyer points lower in her next start. And Richie's Princess disappointed her next start. However, she was involved in the tour of duel the next time, but still. Didn't run that well, so it does bring into question a little bit the quality of that race and whether or not it's a figure that could be a difficult one to reproduce. But it does feel like, barring the first or she should be the speed in this race. And I can understand why better humor me as the favorite, though I've taken the other Charlie Baker runner who clearly ran worse in her debut. Now, she came out of a race here on opening weekend at Saratoga. What I noticed most about her is that she was bet as we moved to the six Island Rose now. And Island Rose took a lot of money that day. I think she was a vet scratch at least once after that race, but she is playing today for Charlie Baker. It looks from the workouts that she's been working with Better Humor Me and both working fairly well. I just feel like the money she took that day might be an indication that she's better than the race she ran. She kind of got lost in the shuffle there, made a little bit of a move, didn't do that much running. But I got to think she's a better horse than that debut. And at a better price, I'm going to take her over better. Humor me. The one Foxy Cara, she's just sort of running out of chances. Five thirds and one second and eight starts. And been reasonably short prices. Her race two back was a massive disappointment. She was a very short price that day in what looked to be a week off the turf race and just did absolutely no running. Now you could say, well, maybe the cut back to six furlongs will help her. But the best race she's ever run from a speed figure standpoint, a buyer speed figure, wasn't a mile. So I don't know why we're supposed to think that six furlongs is necessarily better. She's obviously got races that can make her the winner or major contender in here. But at this point, it's tough to better off her last two efforts. Um, though she'd get a sloppy sealed track last time, but she'd run better in a sloppy sealed track earlier in her career on this aqueduct circuit. Now, the two Malu, I would say, is a little bit chilly right now at three to one. We're also 10 minutes from post, so the num odds could clearly go lower. But Malou in this field, a firster for Todd Fletcher, just feels like she'd be taking more money if she were more alive in this race. Doesn't have a lot of pedigree. The dam was on race. It's the second full. The first one was a $5,000 claimer that ran buyers in the 60s. Now, listen, there's plenty of good horses related to cheaper horses, so it's not like that precludes her from being a runner in here. But from a pedigree standpoint, there's not a lot to love about her as a firster at six furlongs. But from a standpoint of her trainer, there's plenty to like about her. But right now, at the three to one range, She's a little chilly on the board. Nothing wrong with the favorite, the seven, better humor me. I just prefer her uncoupled stablemate, the six, Island Rose. We'll see how it all plays out. Race number two kicks off the first of three pick fours in just under 10 minutes.
The horses are heading out for the second race. It'll be run at six furlongs. This race begins the early pick four. Seven minutes to post.
One minute to post. One minute. The horses are nearing the starting gate. Waiting for a monetary monarch and a busia. And they're all in for race two. And uh, they're off. And there goes Cupright out for the early lead with Better Yuma Me racing in second. Busia far outside is next in third. Then Teresa in fourth. And down at the rail is uh, Foxy Cara. Malu is in between horses and moving up a spot. And then comes Sweet Liberty at the back of the pack, a monetary monarch. And Island Rose in ninth. Cupright is the leader here by a length and a quarter through an opening quarter mile in 22 and three-fifths seconds. Better humor me in pursuit in second. Malou is being asked for more down at the rail. Boussier is on the outside. Foxy Cara has come off the rail and now is racing in a fourth. Right alongside is Sweet Liberty. Malou drops out of it. They're at the top of the stretch with a Cupright in front. With Better Humor Me driving in second. Boussier is on the outside and in third. 
the half and 46 and two. Here comes Better Humor Me up to challenge. Cupright for the lead. Better Humor Me and Cupright. Busia is third. Foxy Cara is fourth. It's Better Humor Me with the lead inside the 16th pole. Then Cupright on the outside. Foxy Cara. They come for the finish. Better Humor Me. And it's a sweep of the double for Kendrick Carmouche. Foxy Cara got up for second. Cupright was third. Number seven, Better Humor Me was first. Number one, Foxy Cara second. Number three, Cupright was third. And number nine, Busia finished fourth. Results unofficial. Seven, one, three, nine. Time of the race, one minute, 11 and four fifth seconds. Number seven, Better Humor Me, three-year-old gray filly by a distorted humor, out of Better You Than Me by Bernardini. Better Humor Me, owned by Alfred Jr., trained by Charlton Baker, and Kendra Carmouche takes both halves of the double. It's official. The exact at 1050, the double 1220, the Quinella pays 760, trifecta $85.75, and the superfecta $158.05. Third race, grass number one, Colonel Bowman, part of an entry. This third race starts the middle pick four, and it's coming up in 24 minutes at 140.
and uh, they're off. And there goes Cupright out for the early lead with Better Yuma Me racing in second. Busia far outside is next in third. Then Teresa in fourth. And down at the rail is a Foxy Cara. Malu is in between horses and moving up a spot. And then comes Sweet Liberty at the back of the pack, a Monetary Monarch, and Island Rose in ninth. Cupright is the leader here by a length and a quarter through an opening quarter mile in 22 and three-fifth seconds. Better humor me in pursuit in second. Malou is being asked for more down at the rail. Boussier is on the outside. Foxy Cara has come off the rail and now is racing in a fourth. Right alongside is Sweet Liberty. Malou drops out of it. They're at the top of the stretch with a Cupright in front. With Better Humor Me driving in second, Boussier is on the outside and in third. The half and 46 and two. Here comes Better Humor Me up to challenge. Cupright for the lead. Better Humor Me and Cupright. Boussia is third. Foxy Cara is fourth. It's Better Humor Me with the lead inside the 16th pole. Then Cupright on the outside. Foxy Cara. They come for the finish. Better Humor Me. And it's a sweep of the double for Kendrick Carmouche. Foxy Cara got up for second. Cupright was third.
fact day. There is no finer place in all of sports. Nerves, excitement, and anticipation. The beautiful, truly stunning. Breeders' Cup World Championships. History remembers moments of extraordinary strength, skill, and determination. True greatness is forged by those who fulfill their destiny. the adrenaline pumping suspense filled action of the sport of kings right from your phone with naira bats it's fast easy and secure download the app today and start winning with our lucrative weekly promotions thrilling handicapping contests and a one-of-a-kind vip rewards program don't just watch horse racing be a part of the action with naira bats
a sweep of the early double for Kendra Carmouche as the favorite gets it done in both halves of the double. This time, Charlie Baker and better humor me getting it done. Wasn't able to get the lead, but stalked and got the job done. Race number three. Earl Bowman is scratched, obviously taking a lot of the salt out of the uh, the entry as he would have been the one that they were primarily betting. Not that business model is impossible. And looking at doubles and pick threes, likely by post time, the three bowl journey will be favored. Um, and, and I don't really have a knock on bowl journey from a talent standpoint. He is the horse to be in this race. The problem that he faces is his lack of speed and the fact that there isn't an abundance of speed in this race. So the other horse who's taking a lot of money has much more speed. But Bull Journey's good enough to get it done, and he closed last time uh, behind a, a horse who was forward in Scott Giatori and, and, and ran a good race to be second. He's run some big figures, but I think it's a fair concern. The lack of pace could work against him and also work in the favor of the six. He's my honey badger as we move on to he's my honey badger, who I would argue ran much better last time in defeat than he ran in victory two races back. He was part of another division, and you can actually look at it because the other division was won by 1A business model who ran over a second faster in getting it done that day. So he was in the weaker division. Not surprising. It was a blanket finish there. But I thought he actually ran his best race in a while off the claim for Rob Atris. That was a, a killer field he was in last time. You know, sort of a stakes-laden field. And don't think he ran that badly. And the fact that he figures to be forwardly placed in this race, likely stalking the speed of Andiamo Ferenzi, who just doesn't seem fast enough to win, he gives him a tactical advantage over Bold Journey. And that's why I and a number of others took him on top in this race. The 1A business model obviously ran fast enough to win it two back. And he's kind of your prototypical David Jacobson horse, a little unreliable from one start to the next. Now, he was down the inside three back <clears throat> in a tough spot. And... <coughs> Probably the rail wasn't the place to be. But then he got a faster pace, a very good field, and he ran extremely well two back. Then he goes down to Maryland and stinks the joint up at two to one. And you can say, well, he might not have got the pace to run at. Okay, well, the winner stalked. The third horse was the speed. But the second place finisher came from six. So it's not as though it, wasn't, it was impossible to close in that race. And he just did no running. So it's sort of like which business model will show up. If the good one shows up, five to one's a good price. But if the one that shows up last time shows up, he really has no chance. I prefer the one that's forward. He's my honey badger. But I agree with the public. It's he's my honey badger. And Bull Journey is two of the very likeliest winners as we kick off the early middle pick four in race number three. And the horses are on the track for the third race. It goes at six furlongs. Scratch number one, Colonel Bowman, part of an entry. Race three starts the middle pick four. And we have eight minutes to post.
One minute. The horses have reached the starting gate. Waiting for He's My Honey Badger and Business Model. And they're in the gate. Number two, Andi Amara Firenze broke through the gate. We'll have a slight delay. Andiamo Afarenzi being led back into the starting gate. And we are once again set for race number three. And uh, they're off from the rail. Andiamo Afarenzi goes out for the lead. He's my honey badger is right there on the outside and in second. King Angelo is next in third, followed on the outside by Easton Bay in fourth. Bull Journey runs in fifth in the early going, and Business Model trails the field in sixth. Andiamo Afarenzi in front here by a length. He's my honey badger in second with a break of a length and a half to King Angelo in third and the quarter win in 22 and two. Andiamo Afarenzi, three quarters of a length. He's my honey badger on the outside. Now Bull Journey makes a move down towards the rail, right alongside of King Angelo. Those two are heads apart, third and fourth. Easton Bay is in fifth, and Business Model is at the back, and they're at the top of the stretch now. Andiamo Afarenzi challenged here by He's My Honey Badger. Andiamo Afarenzi, He's My Honey Badger. He's My Honey Badger takes the lead, and now it is Bull Journey on the move on the outside. He's my honey badger trying to hold off Bull Journey who continues to gain on the outside. It's He's my honey badger and Bull Journey. They come on to the finish together and it is a head bob. Very, very tight. 
Bold Journey, or He's My Honey Badger. Number three, Bull Journey was first. Number six, He's My Honey Badger, second. The 1A business model was third. Number four, King Angelo finished fourth. Results not official. Three, six, 1A and four. And the time was one minute, nine and two fifth seconds. In the winner's circle, number three, Bold Journey, four-year-old chestnut colt by Hardspun, out of Polly Freeze by Super Saver. Bold Journey owned by Wachtel Stable, Barber and Pantafel Stable, trained by Bill Mott, and the rider, Jose Ortiz. Race three is official. The exacta six dollars thirty cents. The double pay seven eighty. Trifecta seven dollars and forty five cents. Superfecta three dollars and seventy five cents. And the pick three thirty two dollars and twenty five cents. Pick six wagering available on the fourth race. There's no carryover today. In the fourth race, scratch the also eligibles. 1A, I'm glad, and 11 through 13. Scratch 1A, 11, 12, and 13. In race five, scratch the 2B, all about the money, and the four, Karis. Scratch 2B and four. In the sixth, scratch two, Poets Woods, and 14 through 16. Scratch two, 14, 15, and 16. A rider change on the 11, Cairone, to Jose Gomez. Jose Gomez rides the 11, Cairone. In the seventh race, scratch the two, Frosty Invasion. Scratch number two. In race eight, take out the six, Dreaming of Snow. Scratch number six, Dreaming of Snow. And in the ninth, scratch the also eligibles, 13 through 16. Race four kicks off the pick six. It's coming up in 24 minutes at 212.
and uh, they're off. From the rail, Andiamo Afarenze goes out for the lead. He's my honey badger, is right there on the outside and in second. King Angelo is next in third, followed on the outside by Easton Bay in fourth. Bull Journey runs in fifth in the early going, and Business Model trails the field in sixth. Andiamo Afarenze in front here by a length. He's my honey badger in second, with a break of a length and a half to King Angelo in third, and the quarter one in 22 and two. Andiamo a Firenze, three quarters of a length. He's my honey badger on the outside. Now Bull Journey makes a move down towards the rail, right alongside of King Angelo. Those two are heads apart, third and fourth. Easton Bay is in fifth, and Business Model is at the back, and they're at the top of the stretch now. Andiamo a Firenze, challenged here by He's My Honey Badger. Andiamo a Firenze, He's My Honey Badger. He's My Honey Badger takes the lead. And now it is Bold Journey on the move on the outside. He's my honey badger trying to hold off Bold Journey who continues to gain on the outside. It's He's my honey badger and Bold Journey. They come on to the finish together and it is a head bob. Very, very tight. Bold Journey or He's my honey badger. Catholic Boy, a grade one winner on both dirt and turf, including this romp in the run happy Traverse Stakes. He's so impressive today, the others didn't even have a prayer. This six time graded stakes winner was the fastest three year old of his crop over 10 furlongs. Now his first runners are hitting the track. Dual surface grade one winner, Catholic Boy, standing at Claiborne Park. Adelphi Racing Club, offering a truly personal thoroughbred ownership experience. Again, I'd have to point towards um, the success, which has been great, um, but also the communication and having first-hand access to all levels, the trainer, the barn, get to go see your horses. It's, uh, it's been great. We're not just a syndicate, and our members aren't just investors. We are partners.
Contact us online to get a taste of the Adelphi difference. The momentum continues for War Dancer as War Smoke delivers at Finger Licks. War Smoke in front, another one for Andre Worry. Barrage runs down the field at Saratoga. Here's Barrage with a final surge. Barrage got him. And Born Dancer goes wire to wire, outlasting all comers. It's going to get close. Be of courage coming inside. Born Dancer. Photo finished. Shouldn't you have a War Dancer? War Dancer, proud to stand in New York.
favored bold journey, got it done by the slimmest of noses for Jose Ortiz and Bill Mott in race three, the favorite narrowly beats Kendrick Armouche and honey, my, he's my honey badger as Kendrick was looking to sweep the first three today. Things are going to be a little tougher for him to get his third at currently 18 to one with the five remind. But these are maidens going a mile on the, I actually don't know which turf course it is. It's the inner because the inner of the rails are at nine and the outer they're at 12. Uh, it's very hard to love anybody in here, and we'll get to the surprising favorite, though I guess you should never be surprised when I read Ortiz's favorite, regardless of a horse's form. The seven, you only live once, figured to be favored for Todd Fletcher, and I get it. He ran well in his first start. He broke slowly. He circled the field. It was a slow-paced race that was dominated in the front end, and there was absolutely nothing wrong with his first effort. The problem is that sprinters in the turf stretching out they're often not effective going longer, and just because he closed doesn't mean he wants more distance, or she in this case. And Todd Fletcher, for what it's worth, Maiden's making their second start in the turf, stretching out from a sprint to a route. He's just four for 55, dollar thirty-seven ROI, 7%. And I just am a little bit dubious. If you're going to stretch out turf sprinters like the first winner, it's usually the ones that have more speed that are more likely to be effective. So while I won't be surprised if you only live once, able to get it done, I think in a short price is a little bit vulnerable. Christophe Clement has two in here, starting with the two, I'm a sure thing. I'm a sure thing ran credibly in his last two races at Gulfstream. We just haven't seen him for eight months, but he's a generous price right now at eight to one as Christophe ran second and third with probably the best two horses in race number one today. This horse draws well on the inside and a generous price at eight to one. Dylan Davis rode the one in the first that got beaten the barest of noses. His other runner, LeBeau, ran perhaps the best race of any of them when finishing second on the turf debut at Gulfstream, came back and was involved in the pace with the horse who uh, actually finished second in there and didn't run particularly well, but it wasn't a terrible effort off the layoff, and I don't think it's impossible taking much more money right now at 4-1. to one. I'm not sure that horse is so much more likely to win, though, than the two. The price discrepancy surprises me. I guess the six, not in a million years, if you like that horse, you're always going to take the worst of it from a betting perspective with Irad. You get a great rider, but you get a short price, and based on his debut or her debut, 2-1 to one is ridiculous. I do feel as though the six, not in a million years, is a horse that may have run, might be a little bit better than that debut. She ran like a horse that probably needed a race, and I do believe she'll run better, but at a short price, I feel like you could do better than her. I'm taking a bomb in here. Both Sarah Obadwe and I took a shot with She Will Dance, and she might not be able to run, but Roy Lehrman's kind of wise guy Roy, able to get a price horse home. And this horse has an abundance of turf pedigree, as good as anybody in this race. The damn multiple winner on the turf produced a turf winner that ran the 70s. You don't see a lot of Highland reels. The second dam, a very powerful turf influence as well. So there's plenty of pedigree to suggest that the number four, She Will Dance, will improve a lot in the turf. And at least she showed some speed in that debut. And the fact that Roy left her in the dirt says to me that maybe he felt she needed a race. It would help her to get to the turf. There is plenty of pedigree and a big price. I think she's worth a little bit of a swing in race number four, kicking off the pick six.
The horses are heading out for today's fourth race. It'll be run on the inner turf at a mile. Scratch the also eligibles, numbers 1A, 11, 12, and 13. This race kicks off the pick six, seven minutes to post.
Less than a minute. Less than a minute to post. The horses are now approaching the starting gate. Waiting for the final horse, number one, put the crazy away, who will break from the extreme outside, post position 10. All set to go, race four. And uh, they're off. And it is She Will Dance, along with I'm a Sure Thing. Now moving up from the outside is Riviere, along with uh, Put the Crazy Away, and LeBeau is there but it is Riviere who will take the field into the clubhouse turn. Put the crazy away, sits in second, and LeBeau is next in third. And then comes She Will Dance, who is now back running in fourth, down on the inside, I'm a sure thing, in fifth. Followed by Mattiquette's Arrow in sixth. Taciturn is in seventh. You Only Live Once is racing in eighth, and at the uh, back of the pack are Remind, and not in a million years. The opening quarter mile, 24 seconds. They're racing midway up the back stretch. Put the crazy away, and Riviere. And now the two of them are on equal terms. They are right together. And then it's a length to LeBeau, who sits off of them in third. I'm a sure thing, down at the rail, moving up from fourth. Taciturn, and on the outside is Amatiket's Arrow. And then comes a Remind, followed by You Only Live a Once. She will dance, dropping back, and not in a million years. Half mile in 49 and 4. So it is Riviere, Put the Crazy Away, and LeBeau. Three of them across the track. Mattiquette's Arrow has now advanced into fourth. I'm a sure thing is down towards the rail. Far outside is not in a million years, who's putting in a late run. Looked like Put the Crazy Away had a steady there in the stretch. Riviere has a narrow lead. LeBeau driving up on the outside, not in a million years, is continuing to gain on the outside. Not in a million years with a last-to-first victory as she breaks her maiden. Number six, not in a million years, was first. Number nine, LeBeau, second. Number 10, Riviere, was third. And number two, I'm a sure thing, finished fourth. Results unofficial. Six, nine, 10, and two. And the time was one minute 37 and three fifth seconds.
Number six, not in a million years. Three-year-old Bay Philly by No Nay Never. Out of Dancing Shoes by Dane Hill. Not in a million years. Owned by Peter Brandt. Trained by Chad Brown. And the jockey, Erod Ortiz, Jr. Fourth race official. The Exacta fourteen twenty, the double pays ten forty, the Quinella eight dollars seventy cents, Trifecta fifty eight dollars and seventy five cents, the Superfecta forty dollars and seventy five cents, and the Pick Three pays thirty three dollars and fifty cents. In race five, scratch the two B, all about the money, and the four Keras, scratch two B and four. Race five begins the late Pick Five. Twenty four minutes the post at two forty four. They're up. And it is She Will Dance along with I'm a Sure Thing. Now moving up from the outside is Riviere along with a Put the Crazy Away. And LeBeau is there. But it is Riviere who will take the field into the clubhouse turn. Put the Crazy Away sits in second. And LeBeau is next in third. And then comes She Will Dance who is now back running in fourth down on the inside. I'm a Sure Thing in fifth. Followed by Mattaket's arrow in sixth. Taciturn is in seventh. You only live once is racing in eighth. And at the uh, back of the pack are Remind and not in a million years. The opening quarter mile, 24 seconds. They're racing midway up the back stretch. Put the crazy away and Riviere. And now the two of them are on equal terms. They are right together. And then it's a length to LeBeau, who sits off of them in third. I'm a sure thing down at the rail, moving up from fourth. Taciturn. And on the outside is Amatiket's Arrow. And then comes a Remind, followed by You Only Live a Once. She Will Dance dropping back and not in a million years. Half mile in 49 and 4. So it is Riviere, Put the Crazy Away, and LeBeau. Three of them across the track. Amatiket's Arrow has now advanced into fourth. I'm a sure thing is down towards the rail. Far outside is not in a million years, who's putting in a late run. Looked like put the crazy away, had a steady there in the stretch. Riviere has a narrow lead. LeBeau driving up on the outside, not in a million years, is continuing to gain on the outside. Not in a million years with a last to first victory as she breaks her maiden.
Now more than ever, it's time to get with the program. When shopping for your next race prospect, consider that New York Reds start with an advantage. Our New York Reds run for serious green. At Saratoga Race Meet, New York Red Maidens run for up to $88,000. New York Red Allowance Horses run for up to $100,000. And New York Red Owners can collect awards of up to $20,000 per horse, per race. So get back with the program. Seriously.
We move on to race number five, closing out the early pick five, the first of three pick fours, and starting out the late pick five, not in a million years, very impressive. She was the they knew of the day, um, getting it done, obviously not prepared for her first start, but man, in a race with a pace basically held together, she didn't break and circled the field from last, a very impressive maiden win for her. I read her tease, winning for Chad Brown, owner Peter Brandt, race number five. Well, I'm a little surprised that the two, Salto de Tigre, is not favored. Now, I'm going to take a look at Naira bets and look at the multi-race bets because I find it hard to believe that that horse is not a substantial favorite in the doubles. And, in fact, she is a, he is a big favorite, and Salto de Tigre is theoretically the horse to beat. The problem is, in his last seven starts, he's got four seconds and two-thirds and a seventh in his last race, and he's lost races at... Three to two, one to two, six to five, four to five, eight to five. And his last race was terrible. Now he's probably meeting one of the softer fields he's been in, but he's a completely unreliable horse for a somewhat unreliable barn that's obviously good enough to win, and maybe he's just found the right field. He should be reasonably close in a race that doesn't appear to have a lot of pace on paper. I just think he's a very tough horse to trust. And by post time, I don't know how much lower than two to one he's going to be, which probably isn't that bad a price. It's just a tough horse to try to get in the winner's circle, given all the times he's failed at short prices. Presumably, he looked pretty good in those races as well. I've taken the horse that will be second choice that right now is listed as the favorite, the nine bold victory. No, I don't like a horse that was claimed three months ago for 20000 coming back for Rick Dutrow and Sandy Goldfarb and dropping down to 12-5, but was on a dead rail for the majority of the running last time out and does have plenty of race good enough to win. The problem is the relative lack of speed, but off the claim for Rick Dutrow, just sort of hoping you get the right effort. Don't love the layoff and drop down off the claim, but he was my alternative, though, as it turns out, at not a much better price. The horse who might be a little interesting here is taking a lot of money as well, and that's the 1A, don't be late, but he will drift up by post time, probably closer to 9-2 to two or 5-1. to one. As the 1A, don't be late, has got plenty of good races. Now, bolted last time, so obviously things went wrong, and we haven't seen him in over two months, but he had put together three solid efforts. You don't see Randy Persaud win races back-to-back -back very often. So this horse had been in raging good form, and if he can refine that form, he not only is good enough to win, he can also be forward, and that's something that the nine is not likely to be, at least based on the past performances. The number six, Dixie Drawl. Well, uh, the problem with Dixie Drawl is the horse has no speed as well and does drop down from out of town where the horse faced some better horses. I just wonder if he still has much of a will to win. I'm talking about him, and I'm not exactly sure why, because he's 22 to 1, which does seem like a bit of a big price on this horse, a little bigger than I would have expected, but he was a big price in the line as well. The pick five kicks off, and biggest question you got to ask yourself is, do you trust Salto de Tigra, who's likely to be the eventual favorite, to finally find the winner's circle? Good luck.
And the horses are on the track for race five. It'll be run at one mile. Scratch numbers 2B and 4. This race starts the late pick five. We have seven minutes to post.
One minute to pose. One minute. The horses are now nearing the starting gate. Waiting now for the uh, final horse, number nine, Bold Victory. And they're all on the gate. And uh, they're off. And it is uh, Joker Boy along with uh, Don't Be Late. Those two go out for the early lead with a uh, pit boss now moving up to challenge. So it's three of them right together. In between horses is uh, Hammer and Amr. To his outside is Bold Victory. Down at the rail is Salto de Tigre. And then comes Dixie Drawl, who is moving up from seventh position, but just three and a half lengths from the lead. Then a big break back to the two trailers, Jumpster and Grump's Little Tots. And the opening quarter was running 23 and two fifth seconds. Pit Boss at the rail has a narrow lead over Don't Be Late. And then comes Hammer and Amr, who's on the move from third. Joker Boy being asked for more, trying to keep up. Salto de Tigre is down at the rail. And then it's Dixie Drawl, followed by Bold Victory. Seven or eight lengths. Back to uh, Grump's Little Tuts. And they're going around the far turn, the half and 46 and one. Now it's a Don't Be Late. And Hammer and Hammer, Hammer and Hammer on the outside takes the lead. Don't be late, back running in second. Pit Boss has tailed off into third. Then comes Joker Boy in fourth, followed by Salto de Tigre and Bold Victory. Three quarters in one, ten and three, they're in the stretch. Hammer and Hammer on the inside is Don't Be Late, who continues to battle on. Bold Victory is putting in a big run here on the outside. It's Hammer and Hammer. Here is Bold Victory who continues to gain. Bold Victory on the outside has taken the lead as they come for the finish, and Bold Victory is victorious. Hammer and Hammer was second, and don't be late, finish third.
Number nine, Bold Victory first. Number seven, Hammer and Armor second. Number one, A, Don't Be Late was third. And number three, Pit Boss finished fourth. Results unofficial. Nine, seven, one, A, and three. The time for the mile, one minute, 36. And four fifth seconds. Number nine is Bull Victory. Six-year-old chestnut gelding by Flatter out of Victorious Amy by Victory Gallop. Bull Victory on by Goldfarb, Carney, Speranza, and Khan. Trained by Richard Dutro Jr. The rider, apprentice, Matty Alver. Race five is official. The exacta, $25.25. The double pays $14.40. Trifecta, $73.75. The super, $105.80. Pick three, $52.50. Pick four, $76.12. And the pick five, $366.25. In the sixth race, Scratch numbers 2, 14, 15, and 16. Scratch 2, 14, 15, 16. A rider change on the 11, Cairone, to Jose Gomez. Jose Gomez will ride the 11, Cairone. Race 6 begins the late pick 4. 25 minutes to post at 3.16. And it is a Joker Boy along with a Don't Be Late. Those two go out for the early lead with a Pit Boss now moving up to challenge. So it's three of them right together. In between horses is a Hammer and Amor. To his outside is Bold Victory. Down at the rail is Salto de Tigre. And then comes Dixie Drawl, who is moving up from seventh position, but just three and a half lengths from the lead. Then a big break back to the two trailers, Jumpster and Grump's Little Tots, and the opening quarter was running 23 and two-fifth seconds. Pit Boss at the rail has a narrow lead over Don't Be Late. And then comes Hammer and Amor, who's on the move from third. Joker Boy being asked for more, trying to keep up. Salto de Tigre is down at the rail. And then it's Dixie Drawl, followed by Bold Victory. Seven or eight lengths, back to uh, Grump's Little Tots. And they're going around the far turn, the half and 46 and one. Now, 
It's a don't be late. And Hammer and Hammer, Hammer and Hammer on the outside takes the lead. Don't be late, back running in second. Pit Boss has tailed off into third. Then comes Joker Boy in fourth, followed by Salto de Tigre and Bold Victory. Three quarters in one, ten and three, they're in the stretch. Hammer and Hammer on the inside is Don't Be Late, who continues to battle on. Bold Victory is putting in a big run here on the outside. It's Hammer and Hammer. Here is Bold Victory, who continues to gain. Bold Victory on the outside has taken the lead as they come for the finish, and Bold Victory is victorious. Hammer and Hammer was second, and Don't Be Late finished third. Experience the adrenaline pumping, suspense filled action of the Sport of Kings right from your phone with Naira Bats. It's fast, easy, and secure. Download the app today and start winning with our lucrative weekly promotions, thrilling handicapping contests, and a one of a kind VIP rewards program. Don't just watch horse racing, be a part of the action with Naira Bats. Perfect day. There is no finer place in all of sports. There is excitement and anticipation. The beautiful, truly stunning. For the breed 
Davis Cup World Championship. There's a big, bold, beautiful world waiting to be explored by you and your friends, of course. But not just any friends, the best of friends. The kind of friends who let you do you. Because in this world, it's positive vibes only. And when you get in the zone here, you stay a while. These aren't just good times, they're the best of times. And your time is now. So come explore. Resorts World. Well, the first horse that wasn't favored to win was Bold Victory. It was the slight second choice. And the funny horse, Bold Victory, it's happened before when he's won races. He has no speed, and he sometimes looks like he's just sort of lumbering along. But when he kicks in late, he was able to get it done and get the win for trainer Rick Dutrow and Matty Oliver. Race number six, kicking off the late pick four. This is a good one. And you've got two horses in it that are both uh, coming out of non-winners of two wins and non-winners of two New York bred races, running against Open Company today, and a race that was also changed when the two Poets Woods came out, taking a lot of the pace out of the race. 
which is worth discussing as we get through the race, because the four loon cry shouldn't really be compromised by the lack of pace. She's a horse that can be a bit forward. She's in good form. You could argue that while it's sort of a tougher bunch with the open non-winners of ones, not the toughest race. I don't think, I think she's a little over bet at seven to five in this big field with her options. But I have no argument with the fact that she's in good form and feels very, very logical. She's also won three straight turf sprints. The one carry, on the other hand, who's also coming out of that non-winners of two New York bred win, she got very fortunate last time with a, just a gorgeous trip up the rail to get the job done. And she did show more speed last time, so she can probably be a bit more forward than she was the time before when the race basically collapsed. And she's in good form, so you don't want to completely dismiss her in her good form. But I think she's facing a much sterner test today. And drawing the rail or not, she's coming off an absolute dream trip. The horse who probably benefits the most from the two scratching is the eight play the music. And likely you'll see Javier Castellano use her speed much better than Dylan Davis did last time. Maybe he was riding to instructions, though I don't know why you would take the speed away from a horse and take her back off what was a very tepid pace in the race one wire to wire. She chased three wide in that slow pace and ran a good race to be second. And with a more aggressive ride and less fleet footed gets a very aggressive ride then she could find herself in front. They look like the two speeds, but Play the Music's dangerous. But I don't quite understand why Play the Music is four to one and the three decanter is 22 to one. Now, decanter finished a neck behind Play the Music and I will not dispute the notion that Play the Music ran the better race. Three wide, decanter was on the rail. But decanter's inside again today and if there ends up being more pace, because don't forget, she was compromised by the lack of pace last time as well. If there ends up being more pace, decanter could, be, could benefit a bit from that. And I'm not in love with her chances, though I picked her second, to be honest. I just don't quite understand the 22 to 1. The presence of the two would have helped her. But this seems like an awfully big price on decanter, especially relative to the eight. Potential trips aside, I don't think she's supposed to be over five times the price of the eight play the music. And I think a closer look, you might find yourself agreeing with that. Now, maybe neither will win, or maybe she won't do well, but it seems like an overlay to me, or perhaps an underlay in the eight, though I don't think four to one's a bad price. I like the 13 Fontana Fred off the claim by Mike Maker. Always interested to see Mike Maker claiming this horse for Michael Dubb. His numbers were the claim with turf sprinters. They're not that good. He's actually 0 for 11 at Naira, but 7 did hit the board. And she's a big price, so I don't really care about trainer stats. And last time out, she found herself on the pace. And while she didn't run very well, the pace did come apart quite a bit in there. I thought her race two back would make her tough here. She blew the brake. Ended up moving a little too soon and got caught by a horse who made the last move in a race that ultimately fell apart. Thought she ran a race in there that could make a competitive here. And if she can refine any of that form, I thought she was a player in this race at a very big price off the claim for trainer Mike Maker. The 10 private credit is a rare Chad Brown Karovich that's a big price, and she should be. And if you like her, you should bet her. But she's coming off a gold rail trip at Kentucky Downs, and no excuse to lose. You can look and say it was a fast pace. It was a very, very hard turf course, and a turf course very much tilted the rail. And she just may not be good enough to win here. But 10 to 1 if you like her. Perhaps a fair price, though I'm not using her at all. We'll see how it plays out. I'm going to try to get the long shot home, the 13, Fontana Freda. We'll see what happens kicking off the late pick four in a fun big field for race number six.
And the horses are coming out for the sixth race. It'll be run at six furlongs on the outer turf course, which is firm. Scratch numbers two, 14, 15, and 16. Number 11, Cairone, the rider is Jose Gomez. Race six in six minutes.
One minute to post, one minute. The horses have now reached the starting gate. Waiting for Free to Roam and Fontana Freda. They're in the gate. And uh, they're off. Fleet footed and play the music. Those two go out for the early lead with private credit racing in third. Kerry is down at the rail and in fourth. Decanter advances in between horses from fifth. Then comes Lost My Sock in sixth. Free to Rome far outside in seventh. Then Chironi in eighth, followed by Georgie Spirit at the rail in ninth. Sweet Duchess is in tenth. The trailers are Fontana Freda and Loon Cry. The quarter 22 and two fifth seconds. Fleet footed leads here by a length. Play the music, in pursuit in second. Kerry is at the rail and in third. Decanter is a fourth, four and a half lengths from the front. Then comes a loss to my sock with a private credit and free to roam on the far outside. Georgie Spirit is down towards the rail. Fontana Freda out in the middle of the course. The half and 45 and one. Play the music has come away with the lead. Kerry is gaining ground on the outside into second. And Loon Cry is putting in a belated run. It is Play the Music who has the lead. Loon Cry on the outside. They come for the finish. Play the Music holds on. Loon Cry with a big run to get second. And Kerry was third. Number eight, play the music first. Number four, Loon Cry was second. 
Number one, Kerry third, and number five, Georgie Spirit, finished fourth. Results unofficial. 8-4-1-5. The time was one minute, nine seconds. Number eight, play the music, three-year-old Bay Philly by Motown, out of Hey Little Sister by Jumpstart. Play the music, owned by Glassman Racing, trained by Mark Cassie and the rider, Javier Castellano. Race six official. The exact in nineteen sixty, the double twenty eight dollars, the trifecta thirty four dollars and thirty seven cents, the superfecta one hundred twenty two dollars and ten cents, pick three pays one hundred nine dollars and seventy five cents. And the middle pick four, $195.25. In race seven, scratch the two, frost the invasion. We have exacta, trifecta, superfecta, double, and pick three wagering. 27 minutes to post at 350.
into the rough. Fleet footed and play the music. Those two go out for the early lead with private credit racing in third. Kerry is down at the rail and in fourth. Decanter advances in between horses from fifth. Then comes Lost My Sock in sixth. Free to Rome far outside in seventh. Then Chironi in eighth, followed by Georgie Spirit at the rail in ninth. Sweet Duchess is in tenth. The trailers are Fontana Freda and Loon Cry. The quarter 22 and two fifth seconds. Fleet footed leads here by a length. Play the music, in pursuit in second. Kerry is at the rail and in third. Decanter is a fourth, four and a half lengths from the front. Then comes a loss to my sock with a private credit and free to roam on the far outside. Georgie Spirit is down towards the rail. Fontana Freda out in the middle of the course. The half and 45 and one. Play the music has come away with the lead. Kerry is gaining ground on the outside into second. And Loon Cry is putting in a belated run. It is Play the Music who has the lead. Loon Cry on the outside. They come for the finish. Play the Music holds on. Loon Cry with a big run to get second. And Kerry was third.
Catholic boy, a grade one winner on both dirt and turf, including this romp in the run happy Traverse Stakes. He's so impressive today, the others didn't even have a prayer. This six time graded stakes winner was the fastest three year old of his crop over 10 furlongs. Now his first runners are hitting the track. Dual surface grade one winner, Catholic Boy, standing at Claiborne Park. RaceLens is the most in-depth product in horse racing with unique features found nowhere else. True odds, predictive analysis, and pace projection. RaceLens, it will change the way you follow horse racing and take your game to the next level. Racetrack Television Network brings you every race, every race. from every track, every track, on every screen, every, screen. every day. With monthly packages starting as low as $5, RTN gives you great value and access to more live HD streaming and race replays than anyone. Visit RTN.TV today to sign up and watch on almost any device, including Roku and Amazon Fire. RTN has packages that start at $5 per month.
Well, the favorite did not get good position early after perhaps breaking a little bit slowly and play the music, got the ride. We talked about it. She didn't get last time, but Javier was aggressive and while fleet footed went, he sat right outside of her and played the music, able to get the job done. Horse in good form, Javier Castellano getting the win for trainer Mark Cassie, race number seven. And this is yet another wide open competitive race. And while the number 10 Reume will be the favorite in here, I mean, she does leave a lot to be desired. She's favored because she's making a precipitous drop. And that makes a certain amount of sense. But you're dealing with a horse that's got eight starts, win in her debut, and since then, she's got four seconds and a third and seven starts. She is not a reliable horse, losing three straight photos. And three of the races she ran second, she was a short price. In fact, five of them. Oh, well, not seconds, two fourths this year. Christophe Clement is doing the right thing. She's a five-year-old mare making her ninth start towards the end of her five-year-old season. He's got to drop her down to a level that she can win, and maybe she'll find the competition easier. And I won't be shocked if she gets it done. But it's the favorite in here. I think she leaves a lot to be desired. She had an absolutely perfect trip last time. The race pace came apart. We'll get the pace out of that race in a moment. And she was on the best part of the racetrack. Trevor McCarthy did everything right with her. She just couldn't seal the deal. So she could win. Feels a little vulnerable. I can see why she's favored. I think one of the reasons she's favored is it's very hard to have a strong opinion on anybody in here, including the seven, Sarah Chrome, who got that classic big fig last time, a 77, because she ran against much better horses. And you'll often see that with turf horses, claiming type, allowance types, get in a stake field, and they'll run 10 buyer points faster than they normally run because they're sort of just carried along by the nature of turf racing. I don't think she suddenly improved five lengths. I just think it was the competition she was running against. Now, she did have a bit of a trip on September 4th, and she's far from impossible. She's lost any speed that she has. We'll see if Javier can get her in the game and win back-to-back -back races. I think she is far from impossible and likely going to be about the third choice by post time. The horse who may be the second choice is the horse I like, and that's the number eight, Lady Jasmine. Lady, Lady Jasmine did have a good trip on the rail last time, but that race came apart. Pace might have been a little strong when you consider the given the ground that day, and I thought she ran okay. Of the three horses on July 27th, I know it was a forwardly placed race, and she was certainly with the flow of the race, but she was chasing outside, unlike Tap It Up, who was just sort of picking up pieces along the inside. And I thought Lady Jasmine getting a needed drop down in here might be dangerous, though frankly, at under five to one, I'm not sure how interested I will be. The number three, Accept Temptation, if she wasn't one for 25 with 10 seconds and thirds, I'd like her a lot more because she's run some good races. I thought she ran very well three back, closing into an absolutely paceless affair. Now, her last race left a lot to be desired, but she does draw well towards the inside, and she's got races that are good enough, as Kenner Carmouche will look for his third win today. 12-1 to 1 on her feels like a generous price. I know she's one for 25, but I think the price is commensurate. So we'll see what happens. Rayumi looking to get it done as the favorite in race number seven, but it's not an easy one. Good luck.
On the track for the seventh race, it'll be run on the inner turf at a mile and a sixteenth. Scratch number two, Frosty Invasion. Post time in eight minutes.
The horses are approaching the starting gate. Waiting for Night Saber and Piminova. There in the gate. And uh, they're off. Lady Jasmine from uh, mid-pack now moving up is a uh, Mowley down towards the rail. And from the outside, it is Night Saber. Lady Jasmine and Mowley, they are right together. Night Saber is on the outside, and Tap It Up is down at the rail. Then it's Piminova, who's racing in fifth, followed by Rayum in sixth. Right alongside is Accept Temptation in seventh. From Hello is down at the rail and in eighth. Judgment Time going wide there on the turn in ninth. Then it is Saratoga Chrome in 10th. And at the back are Sister Nell and Annihilate. The quarter in 23 and two fifth seconds. Mowley is the leader here by a length with Lady Jasmine right behind in second. And Tap It Up is down at the rail and in third. Then comes Night Saber in fourth. Piminova on the far outside runs in fifth from Hello, saving ground down at the rail. Except Temptation is alongside. And then comes Saratoga Chrome. As the field continues along after a half and 48 and four fifth seconds. With Mowley the leader here by a length and a quarter. Lady Jasmine remains in second and Tap It Up is in third, followed by Night Saber in fourth from Hello. Continues to advance down at the rail in fifth. Then comes Accept Temptation. And on the far outside, uh, Pim Manova, followed by Rayum, who's down at the rail. Three quarters, 112 and three. Here is Lady Jasmine now to strike the lead as they come down for the eighth pole. Tap It Up is kicking in. Night Saber on the outside. Tap It Up to the front and tap it up is drawing away here in the stretch it is tap it up on to a victory and it's going to be a three-way photo for second among lady jasmine from hello and the late closing sister nell
Final time was one minute, 43 seconds. Number five, tap it up first. Number eight, Lady Jasmine second. Number six, Sister Nell was third. And number one, From Hello, finished fourth. The results unofficial. Five, eight, six, one. Returning now, number five, tap it up. A, a three-year-old Bay Philly by Taprit. Out of pocket of aces by Harlan's Holiday. Tap it up is owned by Anthony Perry, trained by James Ryerson. The rider is Dylan Davis. In the upcoming eighth race, scratch number six, Dreaming of Snow, scratch the six. Race eight will offer exacta, trifecta, superfecta, and double wagering. And post time for race eight will be 424. Race seven official. The exact is seventy eight dollars seventy five cents. The double pay sixty seven dollars and twenty five cents. Trifecta two thousand. $404.25. Superfecta, $1,413.70. And the pick three pays $269.
and uh, they're off. Lady Jasmine from uh, mid-pack, now moving up is uh, Mowley down towards the rail, and from the outside it is Night Saber. Lady Jasmine and Mowley, they are right together. Night Saber is on the outside, and Tap It Up is down at the rail. Then it's Piminova who's racing in fifth, followed by Rayum in sixth. Right alongside is Accept Temptation in seventh. From Hello is down at the rail and in eighth. Judgment Time going wide there on the turn in ninth. Then it is Saratoga Chrome in tenth. And at the back are Sister Nell and Annihilate. The quarter in 23 and two fifth seconds. Mowley is the leader here by a length with Lady Jasmine right behind in second, and Tap It Up is down at the rail and in third. Then comes Night Saber in fourth. Piminova on the far outside runs in fifth from Hello, saving ground down at the rail. Except Temptation is alongside. And then comes Saratoga Chrome as the field continues along after a half and 48 and four-fifth seconds. With Mowley the leader here by a length and a quarter. Lady Jasmine remains in second, and Tap It Up is in third, followed by Night Saber in fourth from Hello, continues to advance down at the rail in fifth. Then comes Accept Temptation, and on the far outside, uh, Pim Manova, followed by Rayum, who's down at the rail. Three quarters, one twelve and three. Here is Lady Jasmine now to strike the lead as they come down for the eighth pole. Tap It Up is kicking in. Night Saber on the outside. Tap It Up to the front and tap it up is drawing away here in the stretch it is tap it up on to a victory and it's going to be a three-way photo for second among lady jasmine from hello and the late closing sister nell
Jackie's Warrior quickly in front here by two lengths. Here comes Jackie's Warrior up the inside to take over the lead from Life is Good. Jackie's Warrior remains undefeated here at Saratoga, and he wins an unprecedented grade one stakes at the spa for the third straight season. Can't get a better trip than the number five tap it up got under Dylan Davis in race number seven and she won facilely getting that perfect trip. Nice to see Jimmy Ryerson get the win as well. 11 to one in race number seven. Not sure how competitive race number eight is on paper and it feels like there must be a lot of people named Rachel or people who have friends named Rachel betting the eighth because I can't figure out how the distant fourth choice Rachel's Rock is currently four to one. She will go higher on paper. She's up against it, to say the least. But the three Rosebuds trying to get back on track, and Rosebud looked pretty good. She'd run well down in Florida. She ran a big figure when she came up to New York, and she didn't run badly two back. She was compromised by a horse that was able to wire the field and really wasn't a bad second-place finish. Her last race in Saratoga, however, not a good one. Now, there's some moisture in the track, but she's handled moisture before. If she can bounce back off that effort, she's the worst to beat. But I think you have to be at least a little concerned, especially when you're dealing with a favorite, the horse that ran as badly as she did at 2-1 in her last start 
But still, I understand why Rosebug is favored, because her best races are better than the better races for Mosienko. I just prefer the two Mosienko because, first of all, I've got a lot of love for Dennis Lauman horses as we move on to the two Mosienko, but she's just a wind machine. I mean, amazing claim by Dennis and how well she's done for him, making over 400000 since he claimed her at the lower levels. And she's a pretty much a model of consistency. Now, she was a bit above her head last time, but it was an uncharacteristically bad race. So I guess you could argue that she's in a similar boat to Rosebud, coming off an inexplicably bad race. Now, she's bounced back from bad efforts before. So if she can do it here against softer competition, not that Rosebug is bad, she's, she's a major player, and I like Bozianko. I think she's pretty logical, especially if you're looking for an alternative to Rosebug. The other horse, I guess, that has a chance to win is self-isolation. Even though that 94 buyer two back is a little bit tough to take when you take a look at who was in the race and the kind of figures they ran, she still run other figures out of town that are fast enough to be competitive, an 84 and an 85 buyer. Her last race was bad. Five furlongs still, not a good effort by her, and like a lot of Jacobson horses, and we've talked about this quite a bit, she's just a little bit unreliable. But if she can get back to her better efforts, she's one that is a factor in this race, and she's the third choice, and not a bad price at four to one if you like her. I'm going to try to beat the favorite with Mosienko. I'm not going to be surprised, though, if either the two or three win. To me, the others would have to take a step forward. See what happens in the eighth. I'm going to be done for the day. It's been fun doing the prattles. It's been rare doing them. We'll be back on America's Day at the races for tomorrow, Saturday, and Sunday going forward. So we'll see you then. Have a great night. The horses are coming out for the eighth race. It'll be run at six furlongs. Scratch number six, Dreaming of Snow. Post time is in seven minutes.
Less than a minute, less than a minute to post. Horses have re reached the starting gate. Waiting now for Hey Mama Luke and Captain's Daughter. Set for the start of race eight. And uh, they're off. Number two, Mozienko had to steady shortly after the start. Self-isolation. Hey, Mama Luke, far outside Captain's Daughter. And Rachel's Rock down at the rail. And then comes the favorite, Rosebug, who is in the fifth position, four and a half off the lead. And Mozienko, after that awkward start, is the trailer. A three-way battle up front. Self-isolation is in between horses. Hey, Mama Luke is on the outside, and Rachel's Rock is down at the rail on the quarter one in 22 seconds. It's three lengths back to Captain's Daughter. Mozienko has now advanced into fifth, and Rosebug is now the trailer. It is self-isolation in between horses. On the outside, hey, Mama Luke. Rachel's Rock down at the rail. And now the others are closing in. Captain's Daughter's on the far outside. Mozienko's in behind horses. And Rosebug out in the middle of the track. Here is Captain's Daughter. Here is Rosebug who continues to gain. Captain's Daughter has the lead. Rosebug giving chase. Captain's Daughter in front. Rosebug with one last surge on the outside and rallying at the rail is Rachel's Rock. They come on for the finish. Captain's Daughter Pulls off the upset here. Captain's daughter at 17 to 1. Number seven, Captain's Daughter was first. Number three, Rosebug second. Number one, Rachel's Rock finished third. And number four, Self-Isolation was fourth. The results unofficial. Seven, three, one, four. The time, one minute, 10 and two fifth seconds. Number seven is Captain's Daughter, a four-year-old Dark Bayer Brown filly by Midshipman out of Jones Rose by Service Stripe. Captain's Daughter owned by Joseph Birnbaum, trained by Russell Cash, and the rider apprentice, Luis Rivera, Jr., Race eight is official.
the exacta $36.50. The double pays $359. Trifecta, $68.75. Superfecta, $40.65. The pick three, $1,612. The Grand Slam pays $300. $26.50. In the ninth race, scratch the also eligibles, 13 through 16. We have exacta trifecta and superfecta wagering. Post time is in 27 minutes at 4.55. And uh, they're off. Number two, Mozienko had to steady shortly after the start. Self-isolation. Hey, Mama Luke, far outside Captain's Daughter. And Rachel's rock down at the rail. And then comes the favorite, Rosebug, who is in the fifth position, four and a half off the lead. And Mozienko, after that awkward start, is the trailer. A three-way battle up front. Self-isolation is in between horses. Hey, Mama Luke is on the outside, and Rachel's Rock is down at the rail on the quarter win in 22 seconds. It's three lengths back to Captain's Daughter. Mozienko has now advanced into fifth, and Rosebug is now the trailer. It is self-isolation in between horses. On the outside, hey, Mama Luke. Rachel's Rock down at the rail. And now the others are closing in. Captain's Daughter's on the far outside. Mozienko's in behind horses. And Rosebug out in the middle of the track. Here is Captain's Daughter. Here is Rosebug who continues to gain. Captain's Daughter has the lead. Rosebug giving chase. Captain's Daughter in front. Rosebug with one last surge on the outside and rallying at the rail is Rachel's Rock. They come on for the finish. Captain's Daughter Pulls off the upset here. Captain's daughter at 17 to 1.
Now more than ever, it's time to get with the program. When shopping for your next race prospect, consider that New York Reds start with an advantage. Our New York Reds run for serious green. At Saratoga Race Meet, New York Red Maidens run for up to $88,000. New York Red Allowance Horses run for up to $100,000. And New York bred owners can collect awards of up to $20,000 per horse, per race. So get back with the program. Seriously. The momentum continues for War Dancer as War Smoke delivers at Finger Lakes. War Smoke in front, another one for Andre Worry. Barrage runs down the field at Saratoga. Here's Barrage with a final surge. Barrage got him. And Born Dancer goes wire to wire, outlasting all comers. It's going to get close. Be of courage coming inside. Born Dancer. Photo finish. Shouldn't you have a War Dancer? War Dancer, proud to stand in New York. Day. There is no finer place in all of sports. Nerves, excitement, and anticipation. The beautiful, truly stunning. <laughs> For the Breeders' Cup World Championships. On the track for race nine, it goes on the outer turf at six furlongs. 
Scratch the also eligibles 13 through 16. There's exacta trifecta and superfecta wagering. Post time is in eight minutes.
The horses have reached the starting gate. Waiting for Kern River, Egyptian Quest, and Kentucky 31. They're all in line. And uh, they're off. And that was a slow beginning for number one, Kid Emerald. And he's well behind the field. Scaramanga is out for the lead. Whiskey and Wine now rushes up to challenge for the lead. Kern River is on the inside. Okaloosa is on the outside. They're right together, third and fourth. And uh, Bustino Santino in between horses in fifth. Twirling Vine down on the inside in sixth. Kentucky 31 on the outside runs in seventh. Two lengths to Scherzando, who's in eighth. Then Egyptian Quest, who's racing in ninth, followed by looking to win. And a proud alumnus, and way back is Kid Emerald. The quarter in 22 seconds. Whiskey and wine, the leader here by three quarters of a length. Scaramonger on the outside with Okaloosa, who's gaining ground as the field comes off the turn and enters the stretch. Down on the inside is Kern River as Bustin, Bustino Santino gains ground, and we did have uh, a rider unseated there at the uh, back of the pack. Up front, it is Okaloosa. Here is Scherzando now to challenge on the outside. It's Okaloosa and Scherzando, and it's going to be a photo finish in the finale here. Please hold all tickets, stewards inquiry into the incident at the top of the stretch.
Unofficially, number 10, Okaloosa was first. Number five, Shrizando second. Number eight, Postino Santino third. And number four, Twirling Vine fourth. Unofficially, 10 5, 8 4. The time of the race, 1 minute 10 seconds, and the inquiry sign has been taken down. Number 10 is Okaloosa, a three year old chestnut gelding by Destin, out of Capriana by Street Boss. Okaloosa is owned by Eclipse Thoroughbred Partners and Glebe Ventures, trained by Horacio de Paz and the rider Manny Franco. Second win today for trainer Horacio de Paz. The ninth race is official.